Good afternoon, everyone. I'm here today with uh, Melanie Wilson, who's the head of global politics here at UWC. And I'm going to be asking her a few questions about this brand new IB course. Um, so Melanie, global politics is quite new to the IB, exploring political concepts such as power, liberty, and equality. Can you tell our listeners a little bit more about this subject area in terms of context? Yes, of course. So global politics is a concept-based subject. Um, it's built around 16 key concepts. Um, including power, sovereignty, but also others like human rights, development, peace and conflict. And we explore our understanding of those concepts by looking at some big case studies to help us understand those concepts. And of course, there's an, a number of different content points that we need to cover throughout. The course, uh, the, the core course is common at both standard level and higher level. And higher level students also have an extension, which is not content based at all. Um, it's uh, an opportunity for self-directed learning and students can choose two case studies that interest them over the two years and prepare two oral presentations. Um, and just to uh, continue on with that, there will be students this year who will be uh, looking to global politics as an option for their extended essays. Mm. What types of research questions would you like students to consider? I think that global politics um, is rich in really interesting extended essay questions. Um, anything students can consider any sort of questions where they are looking at the way power is used and the actors and the stakeholders who use power. So that could be political processes within a country, but it could also be broader than that and looking at the way in which countries connect uh, um, with each other on the global stage. So specific examples might be something like uh, looking at the relationship or the, uh, between China and, um, and Russia. Um, and how they handled the, the current crisis in the Ukraine. Um, students could also look at an example such as the use of data in driving election campaigns, such as in um, the United States uh, last election. Or students could look at issues more based around human rights, such as um, the human rights violations of, of women in Saudi Arabia, for example. So it's so the research question is actually quite broad um, and that's because the way the Global Politics course defines what politics is, is very broad. So lots of opportunities. So in terms of that then, can you recommend any good resources for students to use? Certainly, students need to use authoritative sources, so they really do need to consult authoritative texts. Uh, a Global Politics EE can lend itself to both field work or it could be primarily based on secondary sources. That's totally fine. It really just depends on the, on the level of analysis that the student's looking at. If they're looking at a local level, they might want to conduct interviews, they might want to um, undertake field work of some variety, or they could be looking at more um, broader global issues, which will mean secondary sources, authoritative texts such as Haywood Global Politics, Goldstein and Peep House, International Relations, um, there's uh, excellent websites, the Council of Foreign Relations, uh, Foreign Policy, um, and a number of very, very um, interesting, up-to-date, well-thought-out podcast series, such as Global Dispatches is a very good one, Trending Globally, uh, The Economist Radio, and a number of others. And what advice would you provide for students who are just beginning their Global Politics Extended Essay? I think my first piece of advice would be to be very, very mindful of um, exemplars that exist within the community. And that is because not only is the EE, um, the specifications of the EE fairly new, but also this will be the first year um, that global politics will be available as an EE discipline itself. Um, previously, we've had world politics, we've had human rights, and we've had peace and conflict all of which are asking students to do quite different things, um, but students really do need to follow the guide quite carefully and really ensure, I think what's important with a global politics essay is that students don't think they're writing a different type of essay and then don't know where it fits and thinks, oh, it's a little bit political, I'll put it in there. Global politics really is a discipline in its own right and students need to really consider the theoretical perspectives of um, politics and international relations and ensure that they're included in their essay. And if they don't have those theoretical foundations, then it's going to be quite difficult for them to achieve success. 
The other thing I would say is that this is a really exciting opportunity for students who are highly motivated in politics um, to really deeply engage in a political issue. Um, also, I think what's really advantageous about a global politics EE is that unlike other subjects, you can use your extended essay in the paper two global politics exams because you have another case study. You have something else that you can, uh, that, that you can write about and previous students who have taken world politics EE or a human rights EE have, uh, have said that that was really helpful when it came to their paper two exam. All right, that's great. Thank you very much. Thank you.